Hey guys, so 5.2 unit circle approach to trig functions. So we talked about this in class. The most, 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 most important thing is to realize that the unit circle tells us really important information about sine and cosine. So the cosine of an angle is the x value of that coordinate. And then the sine of an angle is the y value of that coordinate. So I said here, what is the cosine of 30 degrees? It's root three over two. Let me show you two ways. So the cosine of 30 degrees is the x value of that coordinate. Why is it the x value of that coordinate? Okay, let me remind you, Sokotoa, right? So you guys, you know, we talked about that today. So Sokotoa says cosine of 30 degrees should be, what is that, Sokotoa? So adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine 30 degrees should be root three over two over one. What's root three over two? Oh, look, it's the x value of that coordinate. Cosine will always be the x value of all of those coordinates. Sine will always be the y value because sine is always opposite over hypotenuse. Look, the opposite of 45 degrees is a y value. The opposite of that 30 degrees is a y value. So as long as we're on the unit circle, it's always going to be opposite, which is a y value, over 1, because the unit circle has a radius of 1. And then cosine is always going to be adjacent, which is the x value, over 1. So that's why cosine is x and sine is y. Always, always on a unit circle, that will be true. So we went through and we like practiced a whole bunch of them. Okay. So you have to remember the six trig functions. So this is another way of writing. Okay, so when I say sine, you guys know you have to write it like S-I-N. You can't, you can't say sin, right? So this is still sine of theta equals, and I say Y because it's the Y value. Cosine of theta equals X value. The tangent, you guys know, tangent is sine divided by cosine. If you didn't know that, then now you do, and you're gonna remember it forever seriously forever so tangent is sine over cosine it's sine divided by cosine so I just say y over x so even though it's written like oh and we would write like t-a-n right like my last name um, so even though it's written t-a-n usually so we say tangent okay you don't say cos I'm gonna make you say it again so cosine tangent cosecant cosecant is written like this is 1 over sine and then secant is one over cosine, so it's just one over x. And cotangent is pretty easy to remember because it's one over tangent, and tangent is y over x. So then cotangent is x over y. The way I write this always is in this order. I always write sine, cosine, tangent. Next to the sine, I always write its reciprocal. I always write cosecant. So I think sine, cosine, tangent, I can remember that order really easily, that's always how we talk about it anyway, because it's Sokotoa, and then sine goes with a co, so sine and cosecant is one over, cosine goes with secant, so one over, so no, no co goes with another co, basically, okay, and then tangent goes with cotangent, and then it's just one over, which is the same as x over y, okay, so for some of the examples, Give the six trig functions of point A on unit circle. So they give you this as a question and they say this is on the unit circle. Okay. Um, how would we know that it's on a unit circle? If you were to draw this, guys, if you draw this as a triangle on the unit circle, if you draw the point like on a unit circle and then you draw a triangle, kind of like what we did here, you would see, Oh, that's a, that's a right triangle, because you would get like a 5, 12, 13 triangle, okay? So, so you can trust them. It is a right triangle. It is on the unit circle, okay? But I know it looks weird when there's those, those fractions there, but that's how it's going to be, because when you square this and you square this and you add them together, you get 1, because a squared plus b squared equals c squared, okay? So this is a right triangle, and it is on the unit circle, that point. Okay, so what is the sine value? The sine value is y. What is the cosine value? It's x. What is the tangent? It's this divided by this. So the 13s divide away and you get negative five over 12. What is a cosecant? You flip it. What is a secant? You flip this. What is a cotangent? You flip it. That's all you're doing, okay? So right now we're recognizing 
the values, and then we'll remember, we're starting to memorize this stuff. That's the goal, okay? Okay, so this one is a little bit trickier. This is like what we did in class, but kind of like, you know, on steroids a little bit. So let me show you what I mean. So the cosecant of five pi over six. Eventually, you cannot use a unit circle. You have to start like memorizing the unit circle, right? So we're going to start to memorize it. I'm going to show you how I would do it without a unit circle. Okay, so cosecant of 5 pi over 6. I draw a tiny unit circle. I swear I do this. I'm not just telling you to do it. I do this every time. So I draw a tiny little unit circle, and I go 5 pi over 6 is like way close to you. So it's almost pi, right? So it's like way close to here. And then on my hand, on my left hand, remember? So this is symmetric to 30 degrees. So I use my 30 degrees, and I go like this, and I see root 3 over 2, comma, 1 over 2. What is a, so I write that down. So 5 pi over 6 gives me root 3 over 2, comma, 1 over 2. I know it's in quadrant 2, so it's a negative and a positive. So I'm not using my unit circle, I'm using my left hand trick, okay? And then, what is cosecant? The cosecant is... 1 over sine, which is 1 over y. So 1 over y, and then it's 1 over, what's the y value? Oh, it's 1 half. 1 divided by a half is 1 times 2 over 1, which is 2. Okay, I'm going to do it again. We're going to do it again. The cotangent of 7 pi over 6. Where's 7 pi over 6? Well, usually it's over here. But the negative means it's over here. So actually, it's in the same spot. Okay, if it's in the same spot, I should be able to use my 30 degrees as a reference. So again, my 30 degrees is root 3 over 2, comma, 1 over 2. So I write that in my negative, because that's quadrant 2. That negative 7 over 6 is in quadrant 2. So it's a negative, comma, positive. Okay, and they say cotangent. Cotangent, I have to remember, is x over y. Where is it right here? So it's x over y. So I write x over y, the 2's divided away, and then I get negative root 3. Okay, so not using a calculator, not even using a unit circle. You're trying not to use a unit circle so that you remember how to do it with your left hand. Okay, so remember 60 degrees is going to be 1 half comma root 3 over 2, and then 45 degrees is going to be root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2. Okay. So um, example three, so find the six exact values of trig functions at 13 pi over six. There's no such point as 13 pi over six, right? There's no 13 pi over six. Instead, you have 11 pi over six, 12 pi over six. Oh, this is 13 pi over six. So then you're not using a unit circle really though. So you're thinking, okay, how can I do this without a unit circle? Oh. I could just realize that I'm subtracting 2 pi. So my note over here, I know it's a little messy. This says theta equals theta plus or minus 2 pi. Because we know that when we subtract 2 pi or add 2 pi, we get to the same space. Like if you're here and I say plus 2 pi, you're just adding a circle, right? So you get to the same place. So when you add or subtract 2 pi or 360 degrees, it's the same thing. You get exactly to the same place. So 13 pi over 6 is too big, so you're subtracting 2 pi, which is 12 pi over 6. So what's 13 minus 12? It's pi over 6. What is pi over 6? Again, it's root 3 over 2, comma, 1 over 2. Okay, so I wrote it down. And then what is your sine? Your cosine, tangent means divide. Flip it, flip it, flip it. And then I always see, I always write it in this order. So tangent, cosine, or sorry, sine, cosine, tangent, and then the reciprocal values. So cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Okay, so how would this work? So you can do this one of two ways, but I don't really want you to use the unit circle, right? I want you to think, like use it kind of in your mind. So negative two pi over three. In our, in our class today, we said negative two pi over three. Where's two pi over three? It's right here. Negative two pi over three would be the other way around right here. So it's actually 4 pi over 3. But how can we get that without like having to look at the unit circle? Oh, we just add 2 pi. So if you add 2 pi to this, what is negative 2 pi over 6 plus, what's 2 pi in terms of like, you know, thirds? It'd be like plus 6, 
right? So plus 6 pi over 3. So negative 2 plus 6 is 4. That's why it's the same as 4 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 is the same as 4 pi over, negative 2 pi over 3 is the same as 4 pi over 3. So here are our coordinates. How do we know those coordinates? I think about my, again, so I didn't write this on the notes here, but then this one pi over 6 would be like here, and then I would be doing that just like I did, and then this one over here. My 4 pi over 3, what's that? 4 pi over 3, that's like here. So if I did that, if I like kind of flipped it up and flipped it over, it would be it would be this one, right? So it would be this one. So again, if I flipped it this way and then I flipped it up, it doesn't matter which way, I can flip it up and then this way or I can flip it to the right and then up. No matter what, it would be like here in quadrant one. So there's my 60 degrees. I would have one half comma root three over two. That's how I get the one half and the root three over two. Quadrant three means negative and negative. So what is my sign? I just write my y value. I write my x value. I write this over this, which is that. And then I flip it and I flip it and I flip it. So that's how you get your six trig values. But that's also like the important part is how do you get this? So how do you get this is you have to add or subtract two pi or 360 degrees. Okay. Okay. Here's the last part. So find exact, um, or find approximate values, sorry, using a calculator. Oh, I think I have to say, okay, find approximate values. These are exact values. That's an exact value, okay? Approximate values, those are your decimals. So be careful of degrees versus radians. Let me show you something first. Go ahead and clear your graphing calculator. Turn it on and make sure it's clear. So second plus seven, one, two. I'll do it again, just in case. So make sure that everything's all cleared. Okay, so how do you change between degrees and radians? You go to mode, and when you go to mode, you can see right here, it says radians. By default, our graphing calculator is in radians. So what we want, if we want it in degrees, we scroll to the right, well, we scroll down to radians, and then we go to the right, and then we press enter, and now that one's highlighted. And then I press clear. Okay, so we're looking for cosine of 14 degrees. All right, cosine of 14, that's in degrees. My answer should be 0.97. Okay, so we were doing four decimal points, by the way. Okay, cotangent of, a one, of 14 degrees. So be very careful. Um, cotangent is 1 over tangent. It's not tangent inverse. Tangent inverse is something else. We'll get to that later. Do not use cosine inverse or sine inverse or tangent inverse, okay? So really make sure that you're doing 1 divided by tangent because that's what cotangent is. So you're doing 1 divided by tangent, okay? Or you can use, um, what is it, alpha y equals, and you can use one divided by tangent. And you just plug in your 14, and then you get, uh, oops, there we go, 4.01. Okay, I was a little nervous for a second. Okay, when you see this, see how there's no degrees? This one has degrees, this one has degrees, this one doesn't have degrees, this one doesn't have degrees. Make sure that if it doesn't have degrees, we should say radians, but if it doesn't have degrees, that means it's radians. You gotta go back to your mode. You gotta go back to your radians and highlight that. And then you can do sine of 1.4, and then you get that. If you um, are in, let's say, let's say you try to do, um, which one was it? I want to say, I want to say, is it this one, is it this one? I don't know. Sometimes on a calculator, you'll put something in and then it, it won't work, okay? Basically, it just won't work. So it'll tell you it's an error or something weird, okay? So make sure that if it's not in degrees, you make it not in degrees, you make it in radians, okay? And then cosecant, same with this one. Make sure that you're not using that sine inverse, because that's totally different. So cosecant, you have to remember that it's one over sine. You just plug it into your calculator and then you get that answer, 
Okay. All right. So that is your notes for 5.2 practice. This is the only practice you're going to get. Um, you don't have to do the homework tonight, but that's your homework for um, 5.2b, right? So this is the only homework you're going to get for 5.2 before your quiz on Thursday. Um, it's already posted you know, on Google Classroom. This used to be your homework for 5.2c, but instead we're going to practice 5.1, all right? So this is the only practice you're going to get on this, so make sure you're, you're feeling comfor comfortable, confident. All right, I'll see you later. Sorry, this is weird.